to the tree stands in accordance to law the needs and urgency, which cannot be revealed. So they said to the king, Daniel is the one of the exiles from Judah who prays, who pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to the king to keep Darius and said to him, Remember your majesty that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issued can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him in the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was drawn and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king filled it with his own signet ring and with the ring of his nobles so that Daniel's situation may not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating, without any entertaining, entertainment, without being, being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called out to Daniel in a loud, anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lion. And number 21, I love it. Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before reached the floor, and, 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 and before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then. King Darius wrote to all the nations and the peoples of it in every language and all the earth, May you prosper greatly. The issue, a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. May God add a blessing to his word. Please jump back up with me, if you will, one more time to verse 10 and look at where verse 10 is so we can hang our hat right there this morning. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home, went upstairs to his room where the windows were open toward the New Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had always done. For the time that is all to share together, I want to preach from the subject or even give you a question. So what's the deal with Daniel? Hashtag Daniel 2. So what's the deal with Daniel? Hashtag Daniel 2. I must confess to you this morning, church family, I am a conflicted clergyman this morning. I am conflicted because last week and the week before that, our nation experienced yet another mass shooting. In Uvala, Texas, we see all of these young people that were snuffed out. Their lives are filled with promise. Their lives will never be able to fulfill the calling that God had on their life. They've been snuffed out well before their time. And we as a nation, we sit idly by, gasping and with awe and with shock. And all we can say is our thoughts and prayers go out to the families. We have a Congress that refuses to act, that don't want to do anything about it, and all they do is utter our thoughts and prayers go out to you. And if Uvala wasn't enough, just the next week, a stone's throw away from Oklahoma City and Tulsa, we have another mass shooting at a hospital. And all, our, all of our senators and congressmen still utter the same things. Jim Inhofe, Kevin Stitt, our governor, all they say is the same old, same old. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the families. To hell with your thoughts and prayers. Some of y'all have asked me, was I going to apply and be pastor? Well, let me apply in public right now. Because after this, maybe you might want me in that, in that space and in that place. 
because I do believe that the job and the obligation of the church is to equip the people of God that they may be functional in their homes, in society, and do what thus saith the Lord. And when you fail to speak truth to power, you are not following the commandment of God. It is not enough to just say our thoughts and prayers go out to you. My Bible says that faith without works is dead. You can talk that, but you ain't walking that. We have the unmitigated goal to want to legislate a woman's reproductive system and say you want to protect the life of a fetus, but you don't want to do nothing about those that are already here. Hypocrites, hypocrisy at its best. And we have got to be bold enough to tell them when they're wrong. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Faith without works is dead. What do you do when your faith is challenged? We've seen it this past two weeks. And maybe, just maybe, if we do something other than just talk about it, maybe we go and take our souls to the polls. Maybe we go and start voting a little bit more often. Maybe we give somebody else a ride because if they won't act, maybe we need to elect somebody that will. But one thing I can tell you, I understand everybody has a right to bear your arms. I don't want to take away your First Amendment right, but what I do want to say is there is no reason for you to have an assault rifle and walk around. Do you know it's harder to buy Sudafed than it is to buy a gun? It is more difficult for you to rent a car than it is for you to walk in with your ID and purchase an assault rifle. No other nation has the mass shootings that we have. We have the most powerful nation in the world, but this is the only place that this happens. But then again, you say, well, Pastor, that's erroneous. We know that there are mass shootings everywhere else. Yeah, granted, I'm with you. But this is the only place where it happens so frequently. And when we hear about it on the news, you know how we look at it? It was just another Tuesday. There is something wrong when the church can sit idly by. There is something wrong when we don't hold our senators and politicians accountable. There is something wrong when all we can offer is our thoughts and prayers go out to you. There is something wrong when we talk religious jargon, but we don't do anything about it. When all you can do is have rhetoric, but there's never no action behind it. Faith without works is dead. Here's a brother named Daniel. And this brother named Daniel, he's getting ready to go through his worst moments. But he trusts in his God. What do you do when the worst seems to happen? Do you still have faith in God? Do you still trust God? One of the last things we did at our church before we came over here with you guys is, you know, we, we, normally it's the Daniel fast. I named this a hashtag Daniel Tude. Because when we think about this sermon, this, this Daniel 2, the Daniel fast, we went on a Seek 2020 fast. And the whole church with us, we decided to, we're going to fast for 30 days. And I got to tell you, I hate the, the Daniel fast. I hate it, the Seek 2020. Because you fast not just for, you know, physical health reasons, but you fast because, you know what, I want to get connected to God. I want to be able to hear from God. I want to be able to sacrifice self and give over to the Spirit. So while we were doing this right here, we were fasting, and for the first week, my wife and my, my daughter, we were doing good, and I'm working at mid-first at this point in time, and ended up getting some tickets to the Thunder game, and me and my daughter and my wife, we go to the Thunder game, and mind you, we're on this fast, and while we're on this fast and going to the Thunder game, we get a box suite, y'all. We got to get up there in the box suite, and while we're on this fast, we're going, and we're eating carrots and everything, and while we have some carrots, because they had a little thing out, we just grab some carrots. The next thing you know they bring in these meatballs and they smell so good 
And after they brought these meatballs in, then they came in with them chicken wings, and they came in with some sliders, and they brought in all this good food, and we were smelling it, and it smelled so good, and now we're still trying to be holy and be like, and I started praying, like, God, did you really tell us to fast? Did you really tell us to go on this Daniel fast? Did you really tell us to go on this fast? Because I, I, for that whole 30 days, I, I never went that long without eating a piece of chicken. I just wanted just one piece of chicken. I'm sure Jesus would understand if I get one piece of chicken. And, and so, so we tried to, to maintain and we tried to go on through it. And when the game was over with and everything, and we leave out. My daughter's upset. My wife got an attitude. We walk out, and y'all know how it is at the arena and everything. When you walk out, you got these vendors and all these other concession stands. And when they have it, all you do when you walk out is you smell nothing but good food. And my wife, my first lady, my baby, my boo, my girl, her, she says, I'm sick of Daniel. <laughs> she had what was called a daniel -tude. And when I think about that, when I think about that, that's the way that it came across, a daniel -tude. Because Daniel seemed to have put us in a negative connotation. But, 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 but when I started reading over Daniel this week after reviewing the shootings and everything, I looked at what Daniel was doing and I had to change my frame of reference from an attitude but a spirit of gratitude because there was something in Daniel, something that made Daniel fortify, something that Daniel was able to hold on to even in the midst of adversity. Daniel's attitude. Daniel had a focus. Daniel had a commitment. Daniel had a Daniel had an unmistakable commitment to his creator. I love that. I asked Pastor God earlier. I said, "Hey, when you think about when things go wrong, and you know what? Do you blame God, or how do you stand, and how do you hold on?" He said, "For me, it ain't never God. It's always me." So I got to ask the question, what did I miss and what did I do wrong? And he gave me this analogy about using a computer system. And he says, sometimes the programs won't work right, but you have to go back and see, it. did you install this wrong? Did you forget that? And usually nine times out of ten, when you fix it, it works. And look at what Daniel has. Daniel has this unwavering commitment, this unwavering, this unshakable faith that he has in him. That no matter what comes his way, come hell or high water, Daniel won't be moved. Daniel won't be shaken. And I got a sneaky feeling and a sneaky suspicion that there is somebody at the Word First Church this morning that has a faith like Daniel. No matter what comes your way, come hell or high water, your feet are planted. You refuse to doubt God. You refuse to leave God, no matter what happens, the worst may happen, the bottom may drop out, but you still trust your God. I love Daniel. Daniel had a faith that wouldn't waver. And somebody can testify, no matter what anyone says, no matter who goes with you and who won't, no matter what they believe and what they don't believe, you walk with God long enough, your relationship is such that you trust God in spite of the circumstances that happen with you and around you and happen to you. You trust God. You have an attitude that you'll stick with God until the end. You're going to roll with God until the wheels fall off. you down with God like four flats on a Cadillac. you you just with him like that. And that's what Daniel is. Daniel, Daniel has this attitude that he won't be shaken. And I need some folks that can testify, I love the Lord with my whole heart, my whole spirit. I'll serve him until I die. Is there anybody in the house that has that type of faith? Is there anybody in the house that can testify like that? That I love the Lord and I won't be moved. I won't be shaken. There's an old school song that we used to sing at my old church. And it says something like this. It says, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am sold out for the living God. I'm so, yes, life gets rough. Yes, life disappoints us. But in that moment and in those disappointments, I still believe that God is in control. I still trust him no matter what I go through, no matter what I may face. God is still in the blessing business. And I love it. I love it. Daniel had an attitude. He was sold out 
for the living God. No matter what comes his way, he still sold out for Jesus Christ. He still sold out. Daniel had what the Bible calls an exceptional quality in his God. Matter of fact, that doesn't really work, that exceptional quality in the Lord. Uh, we, most of us come from the old King James Version. The old King James don't put it like this. The old King James don't say exceptional quality. It says an excellent spirit was found in Daniel. This excellent spirit that was found in Daniel, an excellent spirit was found in him, and this excellent spirit was seen mostly in his worth ethic and in his worship. He's a great worker and a genuine worshiper. When you think about Daniel, when you think about that excellent spirit, he's a great worker and an excellent worshiper. He's a great worker. Look at this right here. Daniel has a great worth ethic, worth ethic, and it's paid off for him. Darius the king has noticed Daniel's great worth ethic. And since Daniel has such an excellent spirit and such a great worth ethic, Daniel has been promoted. Daniel has been given position. Daniel is one of the captives from Judah, and now God has promoted him in enemy territory. That ought to make you feel good. God ain't always got to move them out the way. God ain't always got to take you out the mix. God can join you in the situation you're in, and he can promote you in the midst of your enemies. In the midst of your haters, God will promote you. The Bible says that he prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. And the, woo, I'm about to get happy, Bradley. I'm going to get happy. He said, Daniel, a, work, a great a work that was found in Daniel. Darius gives Daniel, he puts 120 satraps or presidents over all the nation. Over those 120 presidents or satraps, he gives three men to be over those 120. Right. In the midst of those three men that run and govern those 120, he puts Daniel over the three. Daniel has found favor in the eyes of the king. Some of y'all talk about, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I got favor, 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 favor. But when you got favor, sometimes favor can also bring you frustration. Because you can be so favored by God that the people around you can be frustrated by you. And as a consequence, now that they're frustrated by you, now they seek to bring you down. So now they're no longer patting you on the back. Now they're your haters, and they're seeking to stab you in the back. You know how it is. You know the old song. Help me out with it, Reed. They smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place. What we call them, church? Preach my sermon. So they sit out there. They set out to cause Daniel to stumble. He's got promotion. When you have a great worth ethic, God knows how to promote you. I mean, when you have a great worth ethic, you go to work on time. You stay at work all day. You don't take and spend at lunch breaks. You don't text and tweet all day long. You don't talk on the phone for people you ain't supposed to be talking to. When you got a great worth ethic, you do what you're supposed to do. You show up. You don't steal the company pens. <laughs> but you do what God has called you to do. I lost some amens right there. Is the microphone still on? <laughs> there is something about a great work ethic that will give you promotion if you are consistent with it. If you are consistent with it, God will promote you. Because the Bible says that promotion doesn't come from the east or the west, but promotion comes from the Lord. God will promote you. God will elevate you. God will bless you in the midst of your haters. Daniel has favor. And favor in your Bible says is better than life. He's found favor in the midst of King Darius. Darius has given him favor. And now with that favor, all hell has broken loose. The same people, his co-workers and colleagues, his friends, now they seek to get him. Now they seek to make some things happen to him. You know what? We can't get him on his work ethic because he show up every day. Right. There was no corruption found in him. 
He was at work on time. He wasn't taking pens from work. He wasn't keeping paper clips. So we can't get him on his work ethic. But what we will do, we'll get him on his worship. Because one thing we know about Daniel, Daniel loves his God. One thing we know about Daniel, he's going to pray three times a day. One thing we know about Daniel, Daniel's going to serve him until he dies. And that is that your commitment that no matter what comes your way, you're going to read your Bible every day. You're going to pray every day. You ain't afraid to let somebody know that you are a Christian. You ain't afraid to let everybody know that you serve the living God. When is the last time you were at the work and having lunch with your co-workers before you ate your food, you bowed down in front of all of them and said, Father, I thank you for the food that I'm about to receive. You don't mind praying in front of them. You don't mind letting them know that you serve a living God when is the last time you stood up for the Lord God you serve genuine worship they said we're going to get him on his genuine worship because Daniel Daniel is a worshiper Daniel is not a secret service secret service Christian. Daniel is not one of those down low under the cover Christians. No, Daniel wears his cape all the time. Daniel wears his Christian, his cross on his shirt all the time, letting everybody know he's a Christian. And Daniel, he seeks, he, 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 he prays they're out to get him and now look at what happens. They're out to get Daniel. Daniel knows what they're up to because he's part of the in crowd. All of the 20, 120 satraps and the three people that were over them, they go to the king and say, Oh, king, live forever. We want you to erect a, de- erect a decree that says can't nobody worship any other god or any other man for the next 30 days. If so, O king, then they get thrown into the lion's den. And the lion's den connotes swift and certain death. I want to make sure you get this right here. They go to the king and say, oh king, live forever. We want to honor you, oh king. We want you to enact the decree and say that can't nobody serve, serve any other god or pray to any other god or any other man except you for the next 30 days. If they do, it is swift and certain death. We throw them in the lion's den. The lion's den connotes Capital punishment. The lion's den is a certainty, a guarantee that you're going to die within five minutes, that you're going to die within two minutes. Being thrown in the lion's den is not where you go to hang out with your friends. It's not where you go to kick it in. It's not where you go just to fellowship and see what everybody is wearing. And the lion's den is a problem for you. Darius said, I like that idea. Let me sign it. Cool in the gang. 30 days, can't nobody worship any other God, pray to him, or any other man except me, or they get thrown in the lion's den. And since it's enacted by the Medes and the Persians, it cannot be repealed. Daniel says, cool. The Bible says, next, Daniel hears about it, verse 10. He hears about it, verse 10, and the Bible says, after he hears about it, Daniel goes home, goes upstairs, in front of the window, bows down, begins to pray, and give thanks to his God. I thought I'd have more amens than that. Is this still word first? In case you missed it, let me give it to you one more again. Daniel hears about the decree being signed. He knows what the punishment and the penalty will be. Daniel hears that, and he goes home, goes upstairs, because he wants to be over the people where they can all see what he's saying. Goes in front of his window, kneels down, and prays and gives thanks to the Lord. Watch the text like he had done in times past. Daniel says, I don't care what your law says. I'm going to still serve my God. I'm going to still praise him anyhow. I'm going to praise him no matter what it looks like. I'm going to praise him no matter what it feels like. I know your law said you don't want me to do it, but God said he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, I'm going to praise him anyhow. I love it, I love it, I love it. Look what Daniel does. He goes up. He gets in front of the window. He prays. 
And when he prays to his God, notice what happens. Them haters. Them bear haters. Have you ever got anybody that's always wanting to see you fall? You got people that are smiling in your face, but secretly they don't mean you no good? Ladies, there's, some, there's, a, there's a sister around that you know that will laugh if you got a run in your stockings right now. Brother, if you tripped and fell in a parking lot, there's a brother that will stand by and laugh and say you deserved it. There's always somebody that don't want to see you move up, that don't want to see you prosper, that don't want to see God bless you. But look at what Daniel does. Daniel, 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 Daniel has this problem with all of them. Let me give you two and I'll get out your way. Daniel's his first issue here. He says he was committed to his convictions concerning his creator. He was committed to his convictions concerning his his creator. Daniel understood that no matter, that nobody that could supersede the goodness of God in his life. I love that. Daniel was committed to knowing that nobody could supersede what God is doing in his life. I know you don't want me to pray to nobody else. I know you want all this attention, but I serve a God that requires that I praise him. He requires that I bless his holy name. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. When you sit in church like this and you refuse to be moved, when you refuse to give God his praise, God says, I got a problem with that. You got the nerve to come to church and ask me, God bless me. God, help me get over, help me get a brighter job, help me get a new house, help me get a new bay, a new boo, help me with this and help me with that. God comes to you and says, what about my will be done and my kingdom come? Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Daniel was concerned about his convictions concerning his creator. There will come a time in your life where you stand at the crossroads and you won't be liked by everybody, and you're gonna have to make a decision. Am I gonna refuse to praise him because it makes them uncomfortable? Or will I praise him even if it makes you move and say, hey, I can't see over you. Well, look at the screen, that's what we got him up there for, move. You're gonna have to make a decision. And look at Daniel's attitude. Daniel made a decision that he was gonna praise the Lord even in the midst of that adversity. Darius gave the decree, and as soon as Daniel heard it, he went home. He went upstairs, got down on his knees three times, giving thanks to God as he had done before. When you prayed in times past, and you know that God has delivered you. And you know that God has answered prayer. When you know that God healed your body. When you know that God took care of mama. When you know that God paid that bill. You have no choice but to continue to believe. If he done it back then, he'll keep doing it right now. Same God back then, same God right now. He's the same God that blessed Daniel. I love it, I love it. As a continuous, Daniel says, I'll bow down on my knees and I'll tell him, thank you. Because Daniel's looking, he's remembering what God has already done. Right. He's remembering the ways he's made. Right. The mountains he's seen him over. That's the right. valleys he's led him through. He's way, ways. We have, he says, we have to be committed to our convictions concerning our creator. If you say he's a way maker, you ought to expect him to make a way. If you say he'll fight your battle, you ought to expect him to put his gloves on. Right. If you say he'll meet your needs, you ought to expect him to write a check. If you say he's a healer, then you ought to run and do backflips like you're already healed. He is the same God. Is there anybody here that believes that prayer still works? I know what prayer can do. Yes. Do you trust God? Yes. Do you believe what prayer can do? All you have to do is talk to him and call on your God in the midst of your adversity. As the old Sanho song that says, what a shame we do not carry everything to God in prayer. 
you have access to somebody that can fix anything, but you want to try to do it yourself. And then when things don't go the way you don't, the way you think they should, or things don't work out the way you want them to, you know your first course of action? Pastor Gunn, can you pray for me? Come on, man. What's wrong with your prayer life? What's wrong with your knees? He's giving you access to call on him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will. I might. I'll think about it. I will give you rest. We, we, we have a daily prayer call every morning at 6 a.m. And one of the things that we looked at, that prayer can change anything. Prayer can change anything. And we highlight that. We remember that because we know that prayer works. Here's your homework assignment. You need to start praying a little bit more. Some of us didn't pray this morning when we got to church. Some of us didn't pray till we prayed with Pastor Murdoch, Minister Murdoch earlier. Don't look at nobody. Keep looking at me. Keep looking at me. But you need to learn to pray a little bit more. My grandmother made sure I prayed. She made sure I had a prayer life with God. She used to always make sure. It's like, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mama. God bless daddy. God bless my pastor. We were trained to pray. He was committed to the convictions of his Christ concerning his creator. And number two, so we can get to my last point here, he was convinced that his creator was committed to his care. Oh, y'all missed it. He was, he was convinced that his creator was committed to his care. Your attitude changes when you know some things. Your attitude changes when you know that God will make a way. Your attitude changes. You, you, you walk differently. You, you talk differently. When you know that God is still your developer. When you know that God is still a provider. You talk a little differently now. You got a little confidence when you've seen God make some ways for you. You got a little confidence when you've seen how God can deliver you. You walk a little bit differently. Now. You know how people can tell a Christian? Because they can see a Christian at their worst moment. You can see, have you ever walked up on somebody that's going through their worst moments, but baby, how you feeling today? Sweetie, I know it's rough, but I'm going to keep on trusting my Lord. She believe in Jesus. Because in the midst of her pain, she still can stand on his word. That's why I like Job. Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Yet will I hold on to him. He may not answer it the way I want him to answer it, but there is something about God where he will change me in the process and I still have a testimony that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, I love it, I love it. Love it. Look, Daniel, Daniel is praying and look at what happens. They see Daniel praying they go snitch on him. <laughs> they go snitch on Daniel. Oh, king, live forever. Didn't you say I signed a decree that whoever prays to any other guy or any other man for the next 30 days, within the next 30 days, they'll be thrown into the lion's den, swift and certain death. King Darius said, hey, that's true. I said all that. Well, king, your boy, your homie, your friend, your boy, Daniel, is praying to his God. He didn't only do it one time, O king. He did it three times. And we saw him because he got in front of his window. Like he was going to throw some shade like, and? What you going to do about it, O king? You know this is a law that you enacted. It's actually signed and edited by the Medes and Persians. As such, it cannot be repealed. Not even by you, O king. You can't repeal it. The Bible says that Darius took all day Darius is distressed and he wanted to find a way to help Daniel out. Evening time came, them same haters. Oh, king, you ain't made a decision yet. Your boy is still running around here. What you gonna do? This law was enacted by you as such for the Medes and Persians. It cannot be repealed. What we gonna do about it? Darius gave the order. They go. They arrest Daniel. Throw him in the lion's den. Darius signs the stone with his signet ring. The other satraps and presidents also sign it to make sure that nobody moved the stone away. Don't nobody move the stone. Got shades of Easter, don't it? Don't nobody move the stone. 
Darius says, Daniel, your God, whom you always pray to, I hope that he delivers you. I hope that he keeps you. The Bible says that Darius goes back home. And when Darius goes back home, this is in verse 20, the Bible says that Darius goes home and he doesn't enjoy any of his kingly pleasures. He doesn't even eat that night. He's worried so much. He's stressed. He's frustrated. He doesn't eat. He doesn't have any entertainment. He's going through his worst moments. And if that wasn't enough for him not to eat, for him not to have any, any uh, entertainment, he has also been robbed of sleep. He can't even sleep because he's worried about Daniel. It's funny that the Bible doesn't say how Daniel was feeling, but it does give us insight on how Darius was feeling. The Bible says that early the next morning, Darius runs to the tomb. He runs to the lion's den. And when Darius runs to the lion's den, this is out of sorts. This is out of character. No king runs nowhere. You give an order, make it happen. He runs to the lion's den. And the Bible says in a voice of anguish, he cries out in verse 20. Daniel, you in there? Did your God deliver you? Did your God keep you? Did your God protect you? Did your God hold you? Daniel, you all right, man? And the Bible says in verse 20, Daniel answered. Help me, Bradley. You, you, you missed it, you missed it, you missed it. I wasted all my time building up to that point. Look at it again, chapter 20. He goes to him. He says, Daniel, you in there? Did your God deliver you? Did your God keep you? And the Bible says in verse 21, this is my favorite part. I've been preaching this text for a long time. No matter what my theme or my thematic thrust may be, when I get to this point, I get excited. I get happy, Pastor. I get happy. And this is why I get happy. Daniel, you in there? He's in the lion's den. Swift and sudden death. Daniel ought to be dead. Daniel ought not be crying out. But the Bible says, Daniel, you in there? And look at what Daniel responds. Daniel answered. In the midst of your hell, in the midst of your heartache, Daniel answered, it may hurt like, it may not feel good. The doctor may have given you a bad report, but you still hear. Daniel answered. Daniel hung on in there. I love that. That ought to make you feel good. That no matter what's going on in your life, Daniel, he answered. And Daniel said, I, I'm still here. Daniel, how, how are you still in there? My God sent an angel. In your worst moments, when you don't know how you're going to make it, your God sends an angel. Your God protects you. When you need somebody to pray for you, he sends an angel. When you need to be encouraged, he sends an angel. When you need somebody to help you get along and get by, God sends an angel. And look at what the angel did. He shut the mouths of the lions. Because he that made the lions can also control the lions. Well, no matter what you go through, church family, no matter what mass shooting we may see, no matter how bad it gets, if the doctor gives you a bad health report, you still need to learn to trust your God. You still need to remember that he's still a way maker. You still need to remember that he still provides. You still need to remember that he'll take care of your needs. You still need to remember that God is in control. All you got to do is hold on. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he fight your battles? Make your enemies your footstool? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he take care of you? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Goodbye word first. May the Lord bless you mighty good. But in the midst of all of that, won't you trust him? Won't you have faith in him? Won't you lean on him and hold on to his unchanging hand? Daniel, answer.
Buford. How about Daniel too, church family? 